Okay, so today we're going to be talking about subcutaneous mycosis. If you remember the last video where we were talking about the fungal infections of the skin, we were talking about cutaneous mycosis. So cutaneous mycosis is things that appear on the skin. Subcutaneous mycosis is under the skin. And so um, if you remember with the cutaneous mycosis, we talked about ringworm. Subcutaneous mycosis, we're gonna have a few different conditions that are here, and we'll, we'll go through these. But um, anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So subcutaneous mycosis is more dangerous than cutaneous mycosis. And the reason being is because of the fact that it's, it's under the skin. So now you're talking about something that's actually in the body. Cutaneous mycosis, like we said, ringworm, ringworm is on the outside of the body or on top of the skin. So it's not a, as dangerous, right? It does not enter the skin easily because there's not enough iron. Many microbes, and I think we mentioned this earlier in the year, many microbes need iron in order to survive in the skin. And if you recall, that's why when you looked at some bacteria, they would actually tear apart red blood cells to get the iron inside. In this case, what happens is this will, there's iron in the skin. So these, the, I'm sorry, there's iron in dirt. So as people are working, with dirt, they will get iron into, the, into a cut when they cut themselves, and then they'll get the subcutaneous mycosis. So the fungal spores, or even the fungi itself, will be on the dirt. People cut themselves. The dirt and the fungi get into the skin, into the cut. And because the iron's there, now it has a, a, some place to grow. And so um, you're going to see a few of the effects of this in the diseases coming up. So, and that's what we just said. So instead of, um, they enter the skin through cuts where pe when people work with soil. So the soil provides enough iron for the fungi to survive under the skin. So the first subcutaneous mycosis we're gonna look at is sporotrichosis. And in sporotrichosis, what's going to happen is, first of all, it's caused by the fungi sporotrichosis shankii. That's the name of the fungi that causes this. Okay, most cases are going to occur in gardeners or people who work with soil, like we just said, because there's iron that is in the soil. Uh, when people get the iron into a cut along with the fungi, now the fungi has a place to grow. It's dark, it's, it's moist underneath the skin, and now you have the iron there. Uh, it forms a small ulcer in the hand where it enters the lymphatic system. Remember, your lymphatic system is designed to kill off microbes. Okay, and so now it can form ulcers throughout the body. And you're going to see this in just a minute. Potassium iodide is, a, it's, is something that um, you might have seen it before. You put it on the skin, it looks kind of like brown. It's like a brownish color. And like it says here, it's strange that it'll kill it in the body, but it doesn't kill it when it's outside the body which I don't know why you would actually need to use it outside the body. I guess you wanted to put it on some soil or something before you would to work with it. I don't know. Or maybe just for testing purposes. But for the most part, potassium iodide kills us in the body. So what happened is if you got the ulcers on your skin, which we're going to look at some in just a minute, if you got the ulcers on your skin, you're going to go ahead and put potassium iodide on this to take care of it. So as you can see here, this is it. This, and the reason it's in a line is because like we said, it's in the lymphatic system. This got into the lymph system and now it's starting to spread throughout the body. And that's why you see these small little ulcers that are here. And, um, and then like we said also, you can treat these. So if you look over here, they're being treated. As you can see the ulcer themselves, the ul and if, remember the ulcer is a hole. An ulcer is a hole. On, on, if, if it's in the stomach, you got, uh, they call it, that's, Normal where people hear of ulcers. If you notice over here, we really don't have any ulcers anymore. So there's one example of sporotrichosis. Here is another example of sporotrichosis right here. Um, you can see we got the ulcer that's right here on the skin. This is probably more common, and this is probably even big for uh, the condition. This is actually the ulcer that's right here. But this is actually kind of big for the condition. You know, most of the time people are going to get small little cuts on their hand and then it's just going to go away. Let's take a look at one more. 
And here's here it is again. Now I think they've drawn something on the skin here. Maybe they want to see the ulcer and see if it's getting better or bigger or smaller. You can still see it looks like there's a little bit of an ulcer that's over in here too. Um, and that could be what's going on here. This is probably more of a common case of what you would see. Because again, usually stuff doesn't get too bad unless something goes wrong. But for the most part, that's it for sporotrichosis and subcutaneous mycosis, the definition of it.